Good evening and good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for this US-Japan science webinar. I am David Jaynes of the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology Graduate University and the OIST Foundation. I'd like to ask everyone who is joining us, and we're expecting about 60 participants for this evening's webinar, to please write in the chat uh, where you're joining us from. We would love to hear uh, if you're joining us from uh, certain places in Japan, or if you're joining us from the United States or other parts of Asia. Uh, we very much look forward to hearing from you. I want to thank all of you again for joining this webinar, which is titled Spaces of Innovation, Smart Cities and Innovation Parks from Scuba to Okinawa. The OIST Foundation is holding this particular webinar in partnership with the Smart City Institute Japan. And thank you for everyone who's writing in the uh, chat. We have some people from Estonia, uh, Tokyo, uh, Okinawa, and New York so far uh, joining us. And I am joining you live from New York, where it's 7 a.m. Uh, and of course, it's 8 p.m. in Japan. For those who don't know, the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology Graduate University, OIST, is an interdisciplinary graduate school offering a five-year PhD program in science. The main task of OIST is to produce groundbreaking, cutting-edge research for the benefit of all humankind. And the OIST Foundation is a US-based 501c3 nonprofit that supports scientific breakthroughs, innovation, and the sustainable development of Okinawa through OIST. The Smart City Institute Japan, SCI Japan, with whom we're partnering for this evening's webinar, is a not-for-profit organization established by Mitsubishi UFJ Research and Consulting Co. and Nikkei Incorporated. The Smart City Institute Japan aims to provide a membership program for public, private, and social sector organizations engaged in the development of smart cities in Japan. Tonight's webinar is on the record and is being recorded, and it's now my pleasure to introduce this evening's three panelists. First, we have Mr. Takehiko Nagumo, who is Executive Director of the Smart City Institute Japan. We then have Dr. Yusuke Mori, Director General of Policy Innovation Department at Scuba City, and Dr. Ali Ganjalu, the former Vice President of Buildings and Facilities Division at OIST, the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology Graduate University. I'll ask uh, uh, Mr. Nagumo to please uh, turn his camera on, and I will turn the floor over to him in just a moment. Each panelist will present for approximately 10 minutes, and then we will have time for Q&A and discussion. We very much welcome uh, interaction from you, the audience. So please feel free to write questions in chat or the Q&A at any time. Uh, I will be collecting those and uh, discussing those with the panelists uh, later on uh, in the evening. Without further ado, let me turn the floor over to you, uh, Tak Nagamo. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for joining us. Okay, thank you, David, for the kind introduction. Uh, let me start my slide to share. Uh, all right. Okay, so hi everyone, my name is Taki Nagumo. I'm happy to be here with you and I present some information about Japanese smart city landscape right now. And uh, as a way of starting this presentation, uh, my uh, brief introduction. So my name is Taki Nagumo. I'm executive director of the Smart City Institute Japan. And concurrently, I'm the senior managing executive officer at Mitsubishi FJ Research and Consulting. I'm specialized in the uh, smart cities and the digital government designing and also research. And I also play some role in the public sector organizations, such as the Japanese government regulatory reform uh, promotion council, and also teach at the universities in Japan, uh, Estonia, and the Melbourne, uh, Australia. Okay, and uh, Smart City Institute, Institute Japan, uh, as uh, introduced by uh, David, uh, is the not-for-profit organization in Japan incorporated uh, about a year and a half ago uh, with a, a membership of about 400 entities, uh, which is consisted of uh, uh, private corporations, public sector organizations, not-for-profit organizations, universities, and so forth. And uh, uh, let me show you some of the activities with the uh, pictorials. So we usually run uh, large-scale symposiums 
two to three times a year, uh, usually focused on the small cities around the world. This is a case of the uh, forum uh, on the uh, Barcelona Smart City. Uh, we invited the speakers from Barcelona to Japan and they discussed with the, uh, the experts from Japan. Uh, so this is a typical uh, event we run. And uh, once we run the event of this kind, we usually broadcast the uh, conference on Nikkei channel and also make it available on demand uh, on the Nikkei channel uh, recorded uh, vision. Uh, and, uh, this is the uh, most recent record uh, of uh, our event uh, held in January. And uh, after the event, we publicized the output on New Nikkei newspaper. So this include the comments made by the uh, minister Hirai, who is in charge of the digital transformation, and uh, Mr. Kono, the minister in charge of the regulatory reform, and uh, some of the uh, university professors and practitioners and so forth. So we can share and disseminate the uh, information discussed at the conference at, for the larger audiences. And, and actually every day we run a webinar. Uh, today, actually before this session, I was running one session, uh, which covers basics of the uh, small cities and uh, startups, open innovations, urban resilience, circular economy, urban ecology, civic tech, gov tech, civic engagement, so forth, all uh, important components of these smart city uh, activities. And uh, let me now talk about a, uh, the Japanese smart city landscape as a way of setting stage for the uh, upcoming uh, presentation discussion after mine. So the, uh, we have a basic principle called Society 5.0 which is comparable to uh, Industry 4.0 in Europe. And uh, there, there are three pillars, uh, convergence between cyber and the physical spaces and the resolving economic and social problems, problems at the same time and the human centricity. The last one is most important. And uh, why we they say uh, Society 5.0, uh, that's the one is hunting and gathering, two is agricultural, three is the industrial, four in the information, the latest number five is the, uh, uh, the, the as we talked, the uh, three key principles, completely new society with the digital technology. And the uh, most important uh, event that took place in the landscape of, scape of the Japanese uh, smart city is the pandemic, which I think is uh, resonated around the world, which uh, I think it's the, um, uh, triggered us to move forward in terms of the digital transformation. And also, uh, interestingly, uh, we shifted the policy direction from Tokyo centralization to decentralization to regions. Uh, probably many of, of you can remember that Japan has grown with the uh, Tokyo centralization, and economy, business, politics, academia, everything thing was uh, centralized in Tokyo. Uh, that was the uh, unique way of growing a country, but the pandemic has proven that it is no longer viable. So we shifted the, the, the policy towards the 180 degrees opposite. Uh, that's the most significant ones. And uh, we are now moving to build 100 smart cities in different parts of the Japan. So even if one major city is down due to the pandemic, other cities are up and running so that we can maintain economic health and societal vitality uh, in the countrywide. And uh, we are now uh, trying to uh, select five, about five super cities, so-called, which will implement five digital solutions at the same time. And uh, also uh, we are going to uh, build digital agency uh, around September this year. So we are now making very dramatic changes uh, from the digital transformation standpoint. And uh, as a way of promoting digital transformation in the cities, we created the architecture, smart city reference architecture, which is actually learned after the society 5.0 architecture. This is the foundation. And we translated this into a, a city version. So that any city in Japan have to follow this uh, same architectural design 
so that we can maintain the interoperability of data. That's the most crucial part of this, uh, uh, the architectural design. And uh, to talk about the super city, uh, let me highlight what it is. It's the holistic future state of Japan, Japanese city targeting 2030. And the five digital solutions must be implemented, not tested, implemented at the same time. And it must be based upon the needs and the wants of the citizens. And uh, we really need to maintain the data interoperability using the architecture just I showed in the previous page. And uh, this is applicable to national strategic uh, special zone for regulatory treatment. So the old regulatory uh, constraints can be overcome with this application for the super city. That's the most important part. And uh, something unique about this uh, um, uh, policy is that we have to name someone called architect, architect of the uh, super city, which, uh, main, uh, which takes care of the total design and uh, project management of entire super city uh, project. And uh, uh, we will have about five cities named as the super city uh, towards the uh, June, May, June this year. And again, this is the kind of schematics. And the most important part is the data linkage platform, uh, or we call it the city OS, to maintain the data interoperability across different digital tool solutions and also uh, across different cities. Uh, this is a uh, kind of a way of leapfrogging our city design towards a new uh, version. And uh, as you know that we have full of uh, excellent companies in Japan. This is uh, the logo of the companies uh, willing to pass participate in super cities and uh, placed in the kind of chaos map structure. So we have everything. What was missing was the coordination. That's why we introduced the concept of the smart city architect as a cornerstone position, new position, emerging professional, I would say, uh, dedicated to the uh, construction of the smart cities. Uh, as you can see, goal of the smart cities same well-being of the people, and uh, multiple disciplines are involved, uh, starting from urban design, system engineering, data science, public policy, business promotion, uh, community design, civic tech, etc. You can name it. The, what was missing is something go across. That's why we introduced the concept of the super city, smart city architect in the design of this project. This is a latest uh, development in Japan. Hopefully this will turn out to be the best practice in the world of the smart city uh, uh, across the, uh, uh, the, the, the national borders. Okay, um, that's, it. that's it. I had only 10 minutes. So that's a way of setting stage for uh, uh, the presentation after me. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tak, for that great presentation. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to some Q&A uh, during the uh, latter part of the webinar. I'd now like to turn the floor over to Dr. Yusuke Mori, who once again is Director General of the Policy Innovation Department in Scuba City. Yusuke. OK, thank you, David, for a kind introduction. So I'm going to show my slides. Okay, um, it's my great honor to give a short talk at the US-Japan um, Science Webinar Series by the OIST Foundation. My name is Yusuke Mori. I'm in the city of Tsukuba as a director general since 2019. Um, I will be talking about some smart city projects which are currently going on in Tsukuba city. So let me introduce myself a bit. Um, I started my career as a government officer at Education and Science Ministry of Japanese government in 2011. After eight years in the field of science and technology policy, I came to the city of Tsukuba. Okay, I'll give a brief introduction of the uh, city first. Tsukuba city has continued to develop since Tsukuba Science City construction plan approved by the Japanese cabinet in 1963. Today, the city has a population of 245,000 and we see 3,500 increase every year, 
which is very, very rare in Japan, where severe aging and decline of population have been observed. 20,000 citizens engage in research and development activities, and 8,000 are PhD, that is 10 times as dense as Japan's average. 10,000 are foreign nationals, uh, which makes Tsukubar a highly diversified area, uh, I'd say. Uh, we are proud of four Nobel laureates in Tsukuba. Also, the city is home to 150 research institutions. Location is very good, 45 minutes from Tokyo and 60 minutes from International Airport. Now, what's the mission of Tsukuba? I believe our mission is to contribute to humankind by improving people's life through science and technology. Scuba City set the mission of our city with science and technology for citizens in Scuba Future Plan, which is city's top priority strategic plan. Here, I'd like to introduce some examples of Scuba City's, um, Scuba City's projects on smart city. The first example is about mobility. Scuba City has been actively developing projects to promote next generation mobility and selected for a smart city model project by the Japanese government. We have tested a self-driving electric cart or electric wheelchair on public streets for the first time in Japan. This technology would help elderly and disabled persons who have difficulty with mobility, such as going shopping or going to a clinic. In addition, we are promoting experiments of the face recognition technologies for cashless payment for public bus. Second example of our effort um, is to make the election online, internet voting. The current Japan's election system is paper-based like most of the countries that voters have to go to the polling place and write candidate's name on a piece of paper. This graph shows voter turnout of 2020 Tsukuba's mayoral election. As you see, percentage of younger generation and over 80 are very low. Additionally, although voter turnout in Japan's election was originally on the decline, um, there are concerns that the spread of the COVID-19 could further reduce the rate. In fact, turnout for the mayoral election in another city decreased by 25 points, like 71 to 60, uh, 46. When I did a small survey with college and graduate students at Tsukuba University, more than 90% uh, of respondents said they are willing to use internet voting when established, and the half of the respondents answered that they would have voted if they have been internet voting system at the 2020 election. Scuba City has been working with startups to create online voting system for three years um, to secure personal identification and secret vote. We combined Japan's individual ca number card, uh, individual card known as My Number Card, and biometric authentication technology, as well as blockchain encryption. We hope we will be able to use it for election in the near future, like 20. Uh, 23 uh, mayoral election in Scuba, and then contribute to those who have difficulty to go to polling place. The third project I'm going to talk about is digitalization of health management at schools. At the end of February in 2020, the former prime minister requested municipalities to close schools in order to prevent the spread of COVID-19. In Scuba City, all elementary and junior high schools were closed in March. For reopening the schools, we decided to collaborate with a startup um, in the city called Lieber to digitalize the children's physical condition management of all of the elementary and junior high schools using a smartphone app. Before this app was introduced, children's body temperature were written down on a sheet of paper by parents at home uh, and then teachers collect them at the entrance of school and check whether they're healthy or not. It's now done by their parents through the app. 
which could reduce the burden of the teachers and also decrease the direct contact between teachers and students, as well as crowd, crowd at, the, at the entrance of the school. Um, to be honest, I thought only a few would use the app because it was not mandate, but voluntary basis. However, surprisingly, now 90% of parents use app. It shows if the solution fits to social needs perfectly, technology will be used. The app enables parents to record and share their child's physical condition with the school. And if their kids are not healthy, the parents could consult with the doctor with the very same app. At the same time, this system allows school to monitor average body temperature of each class and school or in area so that the signs of the spread of infection can be detected earlier and quick countermeasures can be taken. Currently, the Japanese government ha um, has been promoting super city as Tak mentioned. It's like super version of smart city um, under which technology is utilized the re regulations are relaxed and the various data are connected. Scuba City is also actively participating in this scheme. And we will, uh, we call it Scuba Super Science City, provide new options by science, provide diverse well being for citizens. In order to improve the quality of life for our citizens, Scuba City aims to create a community uh, with a spirit of inclusiveness where no one, is, no one is left behind. We aim to create a community where citizens are connected to each other and to the city, uh, where people can make full use of their diverse capabilities and where everyone can harness top level scientific and technological knowledge in solving various issues in the community. We are planning to provide more than 20 services or solutions, as you see in blue square for public good. Um, to do these projects, a wide range of data is utilized, ranging from individual attributes to orientation. For this reason, ethical issues such as ensuring data security, system safety and transparency, as well as uh, informed consent or consensus building among citizens needed to be continually discussed and taken care of concurrently with the, with the introduction of such technology. So we published the uh, ethical principles for Tsukuba Smart City. So there are four parts, the respect for autonomy and no male, no male fee sense, beneficence and justice. And you can download, download the PDF or um, an English version uh, as well as Japanese version on our website. So please, um, um look at this look at it and uh needless to say it's impossible for the city to do those projects of scuba super science city um without any help so we have collaborated with industry so more than 40 private companies and academia including more than 10 research institutions in scuba and universities like university of scuba um, and the Tsukuba University of Technology, which is the Japan's only national university for a person with visual impairment and a person with hearing impairment, um, and JAXA, ICE, or JST. In this academic institution, the University of Tsukuba leads Tsukuba Super Science City with us. This is a project team in the university. Professors are not from single department, um, rather, they have diverse background uh, ranging from robotics, AI, medicine, mobility, infrastructure, urban design to finance. And uh, this guy, uh, I put the, put the head, Professor K Suzuki, the Kenji Suzuki. He's he's um, architect of the Scuba Slippers um, Science City. And lastly, I'd like to show our team member at the city. We create a smart city strategy office and currently we have 17 members. Uh, we will add six members next week. So it's gonna be uh, 23. Okay, I'll stop here. Uh, thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Yusuke, for that outstanding uh, presentation. And now uh, we move from Scuba to Okinawa. And it's my pleasure to uh, call to the floor Dr. Ali Ganjalu, who is the former Vice President of the Buildings and Facilities Division at OIST. And Ali, I'll turn it over to you if you want to uh, turn your camera on and share your presentation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Ali Ganjalu. Thank you, David. Uh, I was actually Vice President of uh, uh, OIST in charge of uh, buildings and facilities until uh, uh, a week ago. <laughs> so so but, uh, that is the reason I uh, have been chosen to uh, show uh, this uh, presentation, uh, which I mainly worked on uh, before um, I joined uh, uh, actually another company in Tokyo. Uh, I will share the screen with you now. Okay, here. So uh, this is uh, just actually uh, in 10 minutes, it will be very short to uh, explain this project. It's very exciting and interesting project. And we started about uh, more than a year ago. And um, initially, actually, it was uh, the president of OIST, uh, Dr. Peter Gruss, who really pushed this project forward. And after that, we followed. And what you see is actually a very, very brief uh, um, a description of what uh, uh, we have done until now, uh, and uh, this will actually continue for several years until it gets realized. On this um, cover, you see three uh, 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 images. Uh, one is uh, on the right, uh, if most of you know, is the uh, OIS logo. In the center is OIS, uh, uh, Okinawa's uh, flag, and on the uh, left is um, uh, Onna Village's uh, flag. The reason I have these here is, is because this is a joint project um, among these uh, three major partners. Uh, of course, OIST has initiated that, but uh, it won't be possible without cooperation of three. Uh, and uh, we have called it Innovation Park. It is uh, a name that we have selected so far. It is um, a kind of a location, a community for research, uh, uh, innovation, and also collaboration with industry together with the uh, education and OIST. Uh, the uh, site is right next to the uh, OIST uh, campus in uh, Okinawa. I will show briefly uh, for those who don't know uh, where uh, Onna village, where OIST is located is and where OIST uh, and Innovation Park will be. This is a map of um, uh, Okinawa's uh, main island. It is actually called Okinawa main island. Uh, and uh, the, in the center, you see that uh, actually on the village, this long uh, piece of uh, land is located right in the middle of uh, Okinawa main island uh, with the air park on one side and the uh, other part of the island on the other. And uh, there are two stars there. The one on the uh, uh, left uh, is uh, uh, going to be Innovation Park and the one on the right is uh, Oist main campus. I'll go closer to that. Uh, this is a close-up, and at the bottom you see this colorful area that is Onna village. It's a very interesting village. It has the highest number of resort, actually, hotels in Japan. It's a very beautiful uh, island, uh, full of green and uh, farms and other uh, attractions for visitors, for uh, mainly for uh, uh, sea-related uh, uh, recreation. Uh, the circle in the middle shows Oist, and next to that uh, innovation park, that's a piece of land that has not been developed yet. And there's a smaller piece of land, actually, we call it Seaside uh, uh, Campus. These three will basically uh, form uh, an, an, a district uh, of innovation for research and technology, and the center of that being uh, Innovation Park. Um, just remember that uh, circle in the middle. Uh, I won't go through the details of this slide, but I have explained the uh, 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 sort of components of each uh, important th three parts here. Uh, one is OIS main campus, another is OIS seaside campus, and another is OIS uh, innovation park. Uh, I have tried to find the best way to summarize the concept. It's more than this, but around this circle, I have uh, added three um, uh, 
uh, goals for the uh, uh, innovation part. Uh, eight, eight goals, actually. Uh, one is uh, research and innovation, uh, another is public uh, facilities, uh, health, uh, number three, four, sustainability, uh, art and culture, six, uh, uh, life, life learning, with education, and uh, diversity and economy. Uh, adding to that, how do we achieve those goals? These are the components uh, that will go to uh, urban design and also for our master plan design of the um, facility, about eight of them. Uh, but one is uh, innovation zone. It's, they are related to our goals. Uh, sorry, I'm still calling our. I still believe that uh, this is uh, OIS. Uh, this is basically OIS, but uh, this is uh, OIS uh, goals for that. And uh, education facilities, number two, it will include international school probably and K-12 uh, for uh, basically lifelong uh, education, housing, and uh, marketplace, uh, number five, infrastructure, number six, movement system, and the uh, art center that will include also attraction based on art and science uh, for uh, visitors and workplaces, uh, which is the main part of also innovation zone as uh, basically industry and startups working on innovation. Adding to that, this is very important for us. Uh, we believe that uh, innovation park or any uh, kind of development that OIST or universities uh, uh, do is for the society, for the community that they belong to first. Uh, so I have summarized, uh, basically num uh, put uh, the eight, uh, 15 districts of uh, Onna Son, Onna village here, uh, that uh, we have started talking to representative from each of them. They have a representative in assembly, on the village assembly. And so they will benefit from whatever we are doing. And we will benefit, of course, uh, from their participation. And without them, this will not be possible. And uh, above all of that, of course, is uh, our SDGs, uh, all uh, this uh, sustainability goals that uh, I have listed here, and everybody, most of the people uh, you know about that, that will be, of course, uh, the, basically the core of our goals uh, and intentions. Uh, and then uh, uh, my uh, colleagues, uh, Tara Kayuske, went through, the, they are mostly involved in smart city. I don't go, I won't go very in detail on that, but one major uh, part that we are planning basically to uh, implement is a smart grid, not only for innovation park, but for Onna village and also for surrounding communities. Um, I'll go quick, just I'll show this, but I won't go in details. We have a business plan. We are going through steps. And here you see one, two, three. We are right on top uh, on the number one yet. And the rest will come after that. Eventually this uh, innovation park will be realized. This uh, box here that I'm showing is very important that it, it is basically an effort by uh, OIST uh, and Okinawa Prefecture and uh, Onna Village. Again, these are some of the, our organizations so far at, the, at present. The box on top shows the partners. The main partners are OIST, Onna, Okinawa Prefecture and Onna Village, and then of course supported by Cabinet Office and Government. The box on the bottom left shows the consultants so far that we, we've been working with. And the, on the right, uh, companies like Toyota, Fujitsu, Hitachi, and others who have been uh, given advice. And they have been basically looking at their technology for this uh, development. This is schedule I won't go, but the, the, just the last line here, if uh, everything goes all right, and of course, we'll go all right. And this, the, the first cut buildings will start uh, uh, there at from 2026. And uh, this are uh, just a master plan preliminary one done by uh, a group of consultants uh, that we invited and hired uh, uh, architects, uh, uh, planners, urban planners, environmental assessment consultants, and uh, civil engineers to basically to uh, come up with an idea. Uh, this is very initial idea will go very quickly. The orange part is the, the site of innovation park. It's about uh, 100 uh, hectares. And next to that is OIST uh, uh, campus. And on the bottom is OIST uh, seaside campus. This is how the land looks from top. As you see, it's all green, full of trees. It's a forest <laughs> with valleys and hills. And so that, that, that was how OIST was. 
uh, before uh, uh, it was built. So we know how to develop this kind of land. Uh, this is a simply dividing that is three uh, zones, innovation zone, community services zone, and housing zone, just to, just to simplify. Uh, of course, the divisions are more than this. This is just to simplify the um, uh, main concept of uh, master plan design. And uh, I will pass through this. Uh, and this is uh, actually after uh, about uh, probably a year of uh, different kinds of studies, we came up, uh, our consultants came up with this design. Uh, Innovation Park is on the top uh, left, and the right is uh, OIST campus showing also the buildings of future. For those who don't know, OIST is a uh, university under construction still. It, has been, it is 10 years old now, another 20 years to go to become fully uh, built. Uh, so that is this shows future buildings as well. And uh, on the bottom, you see that campus. Uh, we have other plans for that that I won't uh, go through them here. Uh, these are some renderings um, uh, of uh, that master plan. Uh, this is a view of R&D zone. In the uh, design of uh, this um, uh, uh, park or this uh, development, uh, our main goal is to preserve nature. Uh, so this will be very different from any uh, development that uh, in urban areas that we see. It will be a mixture of uh, nature and uh, buildings and architecture and uh, basically people living or working there. Uh, and that is, uh, I, I guess a lot of you probably can see from the website of OIS, that is how uh, OIS looks like, actually. Uh, this is uh, a view, an artist's image of uh, uh, visitors' attraction or the center for art or uh, other um, uh, cultural events uh, that uh, we are planning for this um, uh, innovation park. Uh, again, uh, residential facilities uh, for uh, innovation park will include OIST uh, members and also members of the community and also the regional uh, uh, surrounding areas. And an overview, over, overall view of the uh, development. It could be more than this, but this is all I can show in 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Well, Ali, thank you so much for that fabulous presentation on the Innovation Park. And uh, now what I would like to do is ask all of the panelists to please uh, join us for a bit of a uh, discussion and Q&A period. We welcome uh, the audience to ask questions. You can write those questions in chat. We have a few. Uh, and uh, you could also use the Q&A feature uh, at the bottom of uh, your Zoom screen if you have questions. Uh, but first, I wanted to ask a little bit about innovation. Um, you know, the, the, the title of this uh, webinar, again, is Spaces of Innovation, you know, physical sort of places where uh, different kinds of people and technology can come together and uh, think about the future and 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 new ideas. Uh, and the first question I had, which is a broad one, is really the role of of education, especially higher education, uh, in fostering innovation. And I wonder, talk if I could just maybe turn to you first, and maybe you could give us just a a kind of overview uh, of all the different you know, smart cities, you, you mentioned how they're so decentralized now in, in terms of the imaginations. How does higher education factor into uh, these kinds of spaces of innovation for the future in Japan? Right, thank you for asking. So to put it into the Japanese context, as I described in my presentation, we are now decentralizing the use of land, creating 100 uh, smart cities in different locations in Japan. And also uh, the demand for the smart city comes from the citizens, citizens' needs and wants. And uh, without the technologies, uh, particularly the digital technologies, those uh, needs cannot be met properly. So the source of ideas, source of innovation usually comes from the university across Japan. So not only the university in Japan, but in the uh, university in the regions, they work together with the citizens and corporations in the region come up with the uh, new ideas, new approaches, solve the social needs. That's the kind of a role universities are expected to play in the context of the smart cities in Japan. Thanks so much. And Yusuke, I wonder if you wanted to 
comment any more on that. I know you pointed out a bit about how the different universities in SCUBA uh, are engaged in the SCUBA smart city. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I totally agree with what the tax said. And uh, the new ideas usually come from universities. And uh, as I said, um, I we will collaborate with the uh, University of SCUBA and the uni uh, SCUBA University of Technology, which is for uh, the visual impairment, um, the person with visual impairment and the person with uh, hearing impairment. Um, so we will be able to get the feedback of um, what we provide for um, disabilities um, as soon as we provide, um, because we have a very strong tie with those universities and uh, students and the graduate students will be able to join the project easily. And um, as um, in terms of human development side of higher education, I think um, so just existing of university is not enough. So I think um, to, um, the, the, to foster um, the future, the human um, resources for smart city, um, we need a strong tie between the municipality and the universities. Um, to do so, we cre uh, just created a pro uh, the program for uh, the officer at the uh, officer at the city um, to go to a graduate school and uh, learn about um, the urban design. So the officer, the she, uh, the, uh, the her name is Ruriko, uh, studies at the university and uh, work at the city at the same time. So um, as soon as so once she learns new thing that she can apply that those the principles or um, the ideas that to make the uh, to make policies. So that's the idea of the how we can foster on the future on the human resource about for the smart city the collaborating with the, uni the local universities. Mm. By the way, the University of Tsukuba is not a local university, but the top research and development university. So. Thank you, Yusuke. And Ali, you know, you pointed out in your presentation, I think, uh, several uh, points that resonate with Yusuke's. Uh, one clear point right from the beginning was the collaboration with uh, local village and the prefectural government. Uh, but I wonder if you also just want to comment more broadly on uh, the overall role that an institution like OIST will play, uh, not only in, in helping to create the innovation park in Okinawa, but kind of the long-term sustainability of it. Okay, uh, thank you, David. Yeah, the, the, of course, uh, what um, Yusuke and uh, Tak mentioned also apply to uh, innovation uh, uh, developments or parks, uh, and but innovation communities or innovation um, uh, uh, based regions uh, can be also not a smart city too. So it is basically uh, uh, so based on uh, uh, technology and innovation. It has been going on maybe for years, and uh, so that is one thing. But we will also focus on a smart part of it, of course. It will be a smart innovation uh, part. Uh, but uh, one uh, thing about uh, makes this very unique is actually uniqueness of OIST. OIST, uh, for those who know, is a, a very unique uh, institute of science and technology. It is, um, um, I, I won't go through details here, it is fully uh, international. Um, it is very young, uh, and uh, it has been based on actually totally different principles, although it is uh, financed fully by government, but it's different from other national universities, its uh, plans and its uh, a kind of strategy. So that then, uh, this is 10th years of OIST, uh, when it came to, and from the beginning, OIST also, another different thing, uh, actually aspect I should mention, OIST is located in a re resort island. 
there are not the universities around it, and it is uh, just a, and a nice uh, place. Then uh, OISIS, uh, from the beginning, one of the, its goal has been a contribution to sustainability of Okinawa and to actually to society, to community that OIS is located, which is uh, Okinawa and Ono village. So this started from there. Another uh, uh, goal uh, I quickly referred to, but actually maybe not in detail, is uh, collaboration with industry. Uh, creating startups. Uh, right now, inside OIS, there is a building we call Incubator, and that is created to start to basically uh, 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 sort of in, in create startups and uh, uh, make uh, create co collaboration between education, higher education, and uh, actual industry and, and uh, business. And so that was in a small scale. Innovation Park is going to be created to have a larger scale of that. So a, a large or bring the actually technology and industry to the region, which that doesn't exist now. So we, when we started this, uh, uh, Okinawa Prefecture welcomed the idea very much, and Onna Village also liked the idea, and they encouraged us to go further. So one also difference probably will be, I, I know Yusuke was saying that Tsukuba also mentioned that Tsukuba is got kind of also has international presence, uh, but the uh, level of international uh, in OIS is uh, a bit higher. Uh, so that will probably will apply to uh, the innovation part, not just to make it international to bring foreigners there, basically to connect Japan to the international uh, world of science and technology. It is basically a hub that will, can be used by uh, Japanese industry, Japanese researchers to connect to the highest uh, institutes of the science and technology around the world. So that those are the goals that uh, uh, I, some of them that I can mention here, there are more. Thank you, Ali. And you, you actually touched upon a question that just came in, which I'll read and then um, maybe ask talk to comment on in a slightly larger context. The question is regarding innovation startups in these smart cities, do you anticipate encouraging international participants in addition to local Japanese startups? How will you enable startups to move to these cities. Uh, so Ali, thank you. you. You touched upon that um, a bit in the OIST context, which is of course a very international context to talk. Um, could you give us a sense of uh, how that fits in with smart cities uh, throughout Japan? Right, so I think Japan has been already uh, welcoming the uh, startups from the uh, overseas, uh, but probably not so much visible right now. Uh, the key point is that the, we have a uh, testbed across the nation as we are disseminating smart city in 100 different locations. And for the startups, uh, let's say a uh, regional part of Japan is cheaper in terms of rent. So they can start cheaply and implement with the high quality knowledge base from let's say university to the regional level and uh, come up with the uh, new startup uh, solutions. And uh, we have been already uh, working with the uh, many of the startup uh, locations across the world. Uh, let's say Boston, uh, Silicon Valley, Israel, uh, Helsinki, Copenhagen, London, Paris, and so forth, through uh, Jetro actually. So they, we welcome the uh, investment from overseas, startups from overseas to uh, grow in multiple locations at the same time. So if uh, one startup is uh, growing in one location, the market is only one. But if uh, the startup has the two locations to grow, they can double the speed of growth. So I think the, it's a chance for the startups, not only uh, from overseas, but from the Japan to overseas as well, to uh, work in the multiple location at the same time to faster uh, the, the, the speed of the growth. So that's the opportunity. And uh, if you look at the, the business environment in Japan, it's safe to start with, and the diligent people, the technology. So I think it's a nice place to work together. That's, I think, uh, what I can say right now. Thank you very much, Tak. There's uh, another interesting question that has come in uh, regarding how can cities like Scuba and uh, the innovation park that's forming in Okinawa and maybe other smart cities or innovation zones in Japan, how can they 
collaborate with each other and learn from each other. And I wonder, um, Yusuke, maybe I could turn to you for a moment and share your thoughts. Has uh, Scuba Smart City been collaborating and sharing lessons learned with other smart cities in Japan? And uh, maybe um, if you'd like, after hearing a bit about what's planned in Okinawa, if you have thoughts about uh, broad ideas for future collaboration, um, the questioner would love to hear that, it seems. Okay. Um, so I, I think the, the organization like Smart City Institution or Global Smart City Alliance will help um, us to collaborate with each other. So those institution organizations um, aiming to provide the common knowledge um, among the smart cities in Japan, um, as well as the worldwide uh, smart city um, for Global Smart City Alli Alliance. And I believe um, there are so many things we can um, share and uh, we have shared um, the shared uh, the problems between the uh, Okinawa and the Tsukuba. Like, as I said, the population um, increase um, every year in Tsukuba, but it happens only alongside of the TX, which is Tsukuba Express, the new line, the express line. And the uh, peripheral, peripheral area of Tsukuba, um, the percentage of uh, the aging populations is around 50 to 60 percent, which is much more higher than the Japanese, uh, Japan's average. And I believe the, there are some parts in Okinawa has the same situation, I think. So we are, we are not providing new tech for, um, for those the who have the kids or younger gener young generation. Uh, rather, we are aiming to provide the solutions to those elderly on uh, the people. So um, in such area, I think there are a lot of uh, the space for collaborate um, between the Tsukuba and the Okinawa. And uh, again, the smart city institutions, institutes and the Global City Smart, Smart City Alliance will help us to collaborate. So that provides platform. Absolutely, thank you so much. Ali, I wonder if you had any comments on, on that particular question, uh, what ways could potentially uh, the Innovation Park in Okinawa and a place like Scuba City or other smart cities uh, collaborate? Any um, brief thoughts? Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, David. Uh, well, when, uh, as you know, as you saw, uh, you know, and you know very well that we are in planning stage. Uh, we are actually developing concept. There are a lot of things that we need to learn. Uh, not only just the concept of uh, the smart city or innovation, but so how that became possible, uh, both financially, planning wise, and investment, and other uh, sort of many other necessities that makes this kind of developments possible. So what we did uh, during this past uh, uh, about more than a year, maybe a year and a half, we contacted uh, several uh, um, innovation power experts like uh, TAC and others, and we tried to basically learn uh, uh, from them. Uh, and uh, uh, also, I'm sure all of them had uh, issues, problems, and they have solved them and how they did that. Then in the meantime, in Okinawa, we have our own special uh, issues that we have to resolve ourselves, of course, related to Okinawa and what we want to achieve there. Uh, like uh, in case of Okinawa, uh, it's an island totally dependent on uh, tourism. Uh, so this uh, innovation park will actually kind of transform that in that region and the part that we are trying to develop it. So that impact will be also different from uh, other regions. I think each, each of, every development, like every smart city, or every innovation park has its own characteristics and impacts. And uh, OIS will have its own uh, 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 kind of impacts and influence of the society. And that we will also try to share with others as we learn. Sorry, um, 
Thank you very much, Ali. There's one uh, technical question for you, Tuck, which I'll read. Uh, can you kindly clarify if the position of architect as total project producer is similar to a master system integrator for project implementation as the equivalent from India's 100 Smart Cities mission started in 2015 with help from the Bloomberg Foundation? I wonder if you might be able to briefly answer that. Okay, thank you for asking, uh, pra pra Prasan. So while I'm not uh, fully aware of the master system integrator in India, I feel we are talking about the same kind actually, maybe with the slight differences. To talk about the Japanese uh, uh, super city, smart city uh, architect, what it means is that if you were to implement smart cities, uh, you have to deal with multiple disciplines such as data science, civil engineering, urban design, law and regulation, politics, business promotion, sociology. They are talking totally different languages as you can easily imagine. So who can actually connect the dots to the lines to orchestrate the implementation of these smart cities? So some have to play the horizontal role, so cross-cutting or cross-disciplinary role. So, you know, the architect sounds like architect of the uh, built environment or IT, env uh, architect as a architect of the IT components. But when I talk about super city smart city architect, it's much larger than that originary definition of the architect. It's cross disciplinary, disciplinary in a total sense. So uh, I think we are talking kind of the same stuff, but uh, I, uh, believe that our uh, definition of the architect is pretty much wider than what it is, what has existed before. So we haven't tested it yet. We are now testing it right now. So see how it goes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Talk Time uh, is running short. These webinars always go too fast and there's far more questions than we can get to. But let me um, just ask uh, a sort of brief question and with it, uh, ask you each to make uh, final remarks and you can comment on the question that, that I'm going to raise if you'd like in your final remarks or um, we'll just have to do a second webinar to, to focus on it. But one of the topics I think that uh, the world is quite interested in these days is uh, the topic of diversity and diversity and how it relates to innovation. And by diversity, I mean um, quite broadly. Uh, in fact, you just mentioned uh, talk, I think, um, you know, kind of cognitive diversity. You know, there's sociologists, there's scientists from many different disciplines and the richness of bringing those people together. Uh, at OIST, uh, you know, the entire architecture was designed to promote interdisciplinarity. Uh, and we're also quite interested in the intersection of arts and, and sciences. And uh, Yusuke, you know, I think you showed quite an interesting rich landscape in the scuba uh, location. But uh, I wonder if um, I could turn to each of you for final remarks you'd like to make. And if you would like to, uh, I think the audience would be interested in hearing about uh, how you bring diverse uh, thoughts, people, ideas into play uh, in the sort of imagining of how these cities will uh, look like as they grow and develop and come into being. Um, let me uh, turn to uh, you first, Yusuke, and then I'll turn to Ali, and then I'll turn to Tak. Yeah, um, so we um, want to um, diversify the stakeholders, um, including um, the people with disabilities and elderly people, um, the young family with and the small kids, um, international students, and to do to do so, um, I think it's very important to the welcome and uh, create welcome welcome them and uh, create a safe environment to say or speak up um, at the public space. So. Um, they will, they will um, say what they really, really need. And then the city uh, will be able to incorporate that those opinion as well as the, the people themselves uh, to create a smart city project. 
So that's Brian, what, what I was thinking. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Yusuke. Ali. Yeah, well, actually, the time is up. But what I would uh, basically briefly say, you talk about the smart technology and other things. But I want to say that I believe um, science and technology is for uh, improvement of the society and to help humanity. Uh, bottom line. So that is what we are trying to achieve. We, we are trying to basically help uh, the society by uh, uh, kind of creating this kind of innovation parks or technology centers or whatever, but it goes all to help uh, advancing the societies. Thank you so much, Ali, and now Tuck. Okay, thank you very much. As I talked in the context of the uh, architect, as we specialize into certain field, we are more cogn cognitively biased. So, you know, the everyone tune into certain, certain specialty areas, that's only limiting the perspective. So you really have to bring in different people to different uh, to, to the table so that we can generate the new ideas, uh, which is a source of innovation. And then from the uh, Japanese standpoint, probably we need to globalize more. So we welcome participation from different parts of the world, male, female, both. So, you know, the diversification will, will enrich the humanity uh, from the investment uh, innovation standpoint. Thank you for uh, join, uh, letting me uh, join this program. Thank you very much. Well, let me, uh, with that, thank each of you again. Really appreciate uh, having uh, Tak Nagumo, uh, Yusuke Mori, and An Ali Ganjalu with us uh, for this evening's webinar. I want to uh, thank them all for their time and uh, insights. And also, I really want to thank Tak Nagumo for um, having the Smart City Institute Japan uh, co-sponsor this. The OIST Foundation and OIST are both very proud to be members of the Smart City Institute Japan and look forward to future collaboration. Uh, I want to thank the audience for joining us. Uh, many of uh, the members of the audience were in Japan, but there were some uh, early birds here in the United States and want to thank them as well for uh, getting up and joining uh, the webinar. And uh, last but not least, uh, would like to inform everyone that our next uh, webinar that the OIST Foundation will be hosting uh, is titled Living Longer and Healthier, Blue Zones and Aging in the US and Japan. That will be held April 15th at 7 p.m. Um, US uh, Eastern Daylight Time, uh, or for those in Japan, April 16th at 8 a.m. Uh, 8 a.m. Japan Standard Time. That's in partnership with the Japan America Society of Dallas, Fort Worth. And you can find out more information on the OIST Foundation website, oistfoundation.org. With that, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we wish you all a great evening or a great day if you're in the United States or uh, other parts of uh, this side of the world. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks.